Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Woodmere State Revival. It's a nice day today, so we're actually out working by the pool. Excited about that. Uh, the reason we're doing it is because we gotta take the roof off the pool house. And we're doing that because we're actually turning it from a pool cave, because it's only like half a story tall, to an actual legit pool house. Uh, we'll have a full story. We can get in there and easily work on the equipment, add equipment over time, have some storage for rafts and pool toys and cleaning equipment. And we're adding a whole second half to the pool house that'll actually have a half bath in it, toilet and a sink and everything. So much easier for us and our guests to just run in there and use the restroom than it is to run all the way to the other end of the house, track through the house and uh, go in there and wet swim clothes and everything and use that restroom. So we're excited to have a bathroom out here. It's gonna make this a much better, much more functional space for us. Plus, uh, behind us on the patio here, we're going to have an outdoor entertaining space with a fireplace and a covered porch and a barbecue outdoor kitchen area. So the bathroom will also be convenient for folks just hanging around outside. Again, we won't have to run inside and uh, use the restroom there. You can just walk right over here and uh, take care of business. So let me show you what exactly what we're getting into today. All right, so here's the existing pool house or pool cave, as I like to call it, not so affectionately. And we've done a ton of work there. You've seen this covered in other episodes. Uh, we totally gutted it and redid all the plumbing, all the equipment, and made it basically a brand new pool except for the shell itself. Of course, we did a ton of work to the shell also, as you saw in other episodes. But uh, right now, we're excited about making this a full story. So this concrete roof has to come off. Uh, the original pool contractor built this structure out of block. You can see the cinder block stacked up here. And then they use these little quarter block or half block or whatever. Um, and use those to kind of form up and then framed up on the inside and poured a solid slab on top of this place. And I think one of the reasons they did that is they knew this hillside uh, was likely to come down over time. And they were going to end up with rocks and everything on top of the pool house. And the other reason I think it's just, you know, long lasting material pour it once never have to worry about it again not like shingles or something where you got to have a certain amount of maintenance with them over time but we are super excited to expand this pool house again to include the restroom when we had the concrete guy here doing all the patios and everything we had him go ahead and pour our footers so he dug uh, back into the hillside and poured footers for the new block work so that's awesome because we don't have to track any equipment across our brand new patio so we got the footers in place we had the mason here the other day checking out things and uh, formulating a plan. And I think what we're gonna use is a, uh, a cinder block that has either a split face that gives it kind of that textured look like uh, cut stone, or they even make one that looks like a uh, six brick running bond uh, pattern. So we may even do that to match the house and then paint it white. But again, it's gonna be a full story. It'll have two French doors, one leading into the pool house uh, the mechanical area that'll give you plenty of access to the equipment if you need to get bigger things in and out and then over here we'll have another set of french doors let lots of light in that'll be the only source of natural light well, we're not going to do a window on the side or anything like that uh, so we'll let lots of natural light in there that way people don't stumble looking for the light switch and uh, it'll provide privacy too because we're going to frost the uh, glass so you don't have to worry about keeping up the curtains or Venetian blinds or anything like that. So today I'm working on getting this roof off and I had Grant out here with me earlier. He was giving me a hand with the uh, roto hammer, the Bosch Bulldog, and we were starting to expose some of the uh, rebar and everything down here. I just worked a second ago to kind of make sure I had all of my pipe work covered up with sand. So I brought this wheelbarrow full of sand over here and made sure that all the pipe work on the inside had a good bed of sand around it. That way new rocks, chunks of concrete, get down in around the pipes and uh, rattle and chew through one over time then we've got uh, some tarps in here over the pipe work and they're taking some old floor mats and covered up the pumps uh, as we move further you know over back toward the heater uh, or toward the filter i'll do some more uh, you know structure maybe even frame up some two by fours and put some plywood across those areas to protect those delicate things but right now working on this front corner Gonna see how much of this I can get uh, knocked out here. Let me actually go up the ladder here so you can get a look down from above. 
get an idea of what we're dealing with here. So this is the hole I cut to give access for the sand filter. So it kind of gives you an access, or kind of gives you an idea what we're dealing with here. It looks like about three inches of concrete with some rebar scattered through. So it's gonna be a bit of work. And you know, this, this Bosch hammer will do it, uh, but it's gonna be a bit of work. I could use something bigger, like a, you know, an actual jackhammer, but my concern was that it was gonna knock off really big chunks and fall down and break in, break some of the uh, more delicate stuff. So I've been sledgehammering a little bit to soften it up and then uh, using the, the uh, roto hammer with that chisel point bit on there uh, to really go down through there. Our guys were here the other day, our uh, construction crew who's gonna help do some of the work on the outside. And uh, they actually exposed the whole back of this place and then dug down and we're actually gonna dig down a little bit further and put a French drain in uh, behind this to help control some of the water. And then I'll go down and tie into another French drain in behind the new addition. And then we're gonna waterproof the back of uh, both of these. So that'll help control the water because we do get a fair amount of water coming out of this kind of shaley stuff. Water just flows freely in between it. Every time it rains, you see it running out all over the place. So uh, we're gonna block up the entire building though. We're not gonna do any wood framing. Actually with the price of wood the way it is right now, it's actually cheaper to block it up with that split face block or that textured block than it is to uh, build it out of wood right now, which is crazy to me. But uh, the wood prices have gone crazy this year and last. So that'll give us uh, you know, a good durable structure and won't worry about the water coming down against the back of it. We can waterproof the whole back. And if any of these rocks come loose over time, rolls down and just kind of bounces off the structure, not anything that's gonna harm it. Uh, as if it would come down and hit, uh, you know, wood or exterior siding or something like that. All right, so that's uh, that's where we're at. That's the lay of the land. I'm going to go ahead and get uh, back to chipping here, and I'll give you guys an update in a little bit once I've got some more of this uh, handled. So we got a pretty good hole chopped in the uh, corner of the pool house roof there yesterday and had some stuff to do uh, yesterday evening, so went ahead and uh, quit. Uh, back working on it today. As you can see behind me there, you can see some rebar and uh, some daylight, and it was a learning process. You know, I figured out exactly the best way to get through the concrete, also what's in the concrete as far as rebar, and found that, uh, you know, the rebar spacing is fairly wide, so we're not gonna have to deal with a whole lot of that. Uh, the concrete is fairly brittle on the surface. Uh, the concrete is thicker in the front of the pool house than it is the rear, so, Learned a lot yesterday and found that really ultimately I think I'm going to have to pull most of the stuff that's in the pool house out in order to do a good job uh, getting the demolition without uh, done without tearing up anything. So that's actually what I'm working on right now is disconnecting pumps and uh, removing the wiring harness uh, for the different things. So it sucks taking it all apart, but at the same time, if it saves us from you know breaking a piece of equipment and you know, then that's worth it. But also I think once the pool house is a, is a full story, I'm gonna move the control panel up, you know, to about chest height, along with all the other, you know, control panels and all the other stuff and kind of rerun the wiring in order to, uh, to raise everything up. So ultimately that's gonna make it easier for me to work on, access the control panel, keep it further off the ground in case of water, rodents, uh, whatever, and, uh, but again, ultimately it's gonna make it neater, safer, easier to work on, save me from having to squat down and, and hunch over and work on anything, which is really the idea behind, you know, making this place bigger to start with. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. It'll make a little bit more sense once you can see it. All right, so here's the control panel. Uh, next to it, you can see the automatic fill system. And over here is the transformer for the light. And then we've got all this wiring coming out the bottom here. I ran everything in watertight conduits, basically treating this space like an outdoor space because it didn't have a door on the front, rain and water blowing in. Wanted to make sure everything was watertight. The new space, thankfully, is going to be dry. Uh, it's gonna be weather tight. So don't necessarily have to run uh, everything in this conduit, but I probably still will. Again, it's a pool house. You're gonna have uh, spills you know, when you're changing the filter baskets and, and doing things like that. Uh, so ultimately I'll probably still protect the, um, everything in this watertight conduit. It makes for a really neat 
um, a really neat pool house, and it also helps protect your wiring, you know, so you don't step on it, grind it in, again, rodents chewing through it, that sort of thing. Uh, here you can see where the gas line comes into the pool house, and you can see where the electric comes in, big conduit that got run underneath uh, the concrete patio back to the house. So we got plenty of wire here. I asked the guys to leave it long so that I can raise the panel up. So here's where the current roof is. Once the uh, roof's gone and we add the rest of the story, uh, the rest of the uh, pool house, we can actually raise this entire panel up. So that means lengthening all this wiring, which is a pain. Again, it means, you know, redoing this, uh, getting rid of this current flexible conduit and uh, adding longer pieces. So that kind of sucks, but again, I think it's ultimately going to make for a better uh, end result. These wires that currently kind of run across the floor, I'm going to run them up and across the new door down to the other side here, and then they'll go down their prospective conduits uh, down to the other side uh, and out into, into the pool. So ultimately, again, I think it's going to make for a neater pool house, easier to work on, uh, better protect everything in here. So I'm going to continue to disassemble this stuff. I'm kind of making notes, taking some photos as I'm taking it apart. That way I know exactly where everything's supposed to go uh, when we're ready to put it back together and don't have to do a bunch of research and consult the manuals and everything like I did the first time when we were putting it all together. So next I'm going to go ahead and remove the automatic fill system here, disconnect the wiring, and then I'll disconnect the wiring for the heater. And that'll be it. I've already got the other two pumps out. Actually, scratch that. I got... Uh, our uh, transformer here for our light. Got to take that out too. But other than that, it'll be uh, pretty simple. And then we'll be ready to go ahead and uh, disconnect the main power feed and we'll be ready to pull the panel off the wall. Simple. <laughs> all right, well, as you can see, the uh, control panel's gone. <laughs> it's painful taking all this stuff apart, you know, if you work so hard to put it together. But just have to... Keep remembering it's all for the better good. Ultimately, it's going to make for a much nicer pool house. So, yes, it stinks to have to uh, to take it apart, all apart, but uh, it is going to protect it. And ultimately, I'm going to redo it all anyways and uh, make the wiring and everything else better in the long run. So, it's going to be worth it. Next up, we got to take the duct, uh, the uh, flue down for the uh, heater. And then I'll protect the top of the heater. And then I'm going to put a board across uh, from the top of the filter down to the heater and then once that uh, is in place I can go ahead and resume demolition and try to get some more of this roof out. All right so our framing and our three-quarter inch plywood is in place. We're just about ready to tear out some more of this ceiling or this uh, concrete roof. As you can see the panel's gone. All the wiring and everything is gone except for the heater. And over on this side, all the valving and plumbing and everything's gone. Both pumps are gone. Only thing really left is a little bit of pipe stubbed up. And then, uh, you know, of course, our filter vessel. We may be able to get that out after the roof is gone. And at least that way we can get it out of the way of the masons and everything as they're in here working, trying to get the uh, pool house constructed. But I think we built a pretty good shelter here. And as long as we keep, you know, cleaning the concrete off as we break it down, it's not going to overload the, uh, the framing. But really, it's just meant to catch it when it falls. That way it doesn't, you know, hit the ground and bounce and crash into the heater, snap off the water line, break off the gas line, <laughs> anything explosive. So uh, I think this is where we're going to wrap up for the evening. It's getting late, and uh, go ahead and get everything cleaned up and uh, get ready for the work day tomorrow. So that's going to do it for us. We appreciate you guys tuning in, and be sure to hit that subscription button so you don't miss a single episode. We're going to keep uh, you updated as this pool house comes to life. Simultaneously, as uh, the Masons here working on the pool house, they're also going to be working on the back porch and working on the three-car uh, carriage house with a one-bedroom guest suite up top. So we got a lot of projects coming up this spring, and the weather's warming up, birds are singing, uh, trees are starting to bud out, so it won't be long. We'll have all this stuff underway. We're really excited. 
got to get this pool house knocked out so I can get it put back together so we can get the pool open. That's uh, obviously critical for the happiness of the family. So be sure to keep tuning back in. We'll keep keep you guys updated on our progress. Uh, give us a like if you would, please. If you've got any comments or questions, as always, leave those down below. We're happy to reply with information on any of the things you've seen here today. And of course, keep sharing the channel with your friends and family. We appreciate you guys. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.